Most people think slavery ended 200 years ago, but in 2013 it is still going on. Modern day slavery is a problem that a majority of us don't know is even happening. 27 million people around the world are slaves today. There has never been this many slaves, which is ironic because once it becomes illegal, it gets worse. So many innocent people have experienced and witnessed things that we can't even imagine. Helia, who is now a grown woman, was a young slave for many years. At the age of five, Helia's mother died and later moved in with her neighbor when she was 12. She was forced to do all of the housework and was treated like an animal. Helia finally escaped, then was enslaved again. She went on to get married and have kids. One night, protesters from Haiti broke into her house, raped her, and killed her husband. She could not support her children and had to send them into the child slavery system, Restavec. Finally, with the help from an anti-slavery group called FTC, Helia and her family are now doing well. Colin, a 17-year-old girl, was happy living her life freely with her grandfather in Cambodia. However, her fate was completely changed one day when she was 12. A woman asked her if she wanted to work in a garment factory, and Dolan said yes and agreed to go with her to the factory. When Dolan went with the woman, she sold her to a brothel in Phnom Penh, Cambodia's capital. When she first arrived at the brothel, she refused to go with the client, so the brothel owners responded by threatening her with electrical cables and starving and beating her until she went with the clients. Dolan described her time in the brothel as hell. Finally, the police and an organization called AFESIP saved her during a brothel raid. She has been living in the AFESIP shelter ever since and hopes for a brighter future. His son was diagnosed with cancer, but he didn't have the money to help him get treated. Miguel decided that he would go to the United States so he could find better work to support his ill son. He didn't have enough money for his voyage over, so he contacted someone who would give him a loan. Ramiro Ramos, whose business was in Florida, offered to pay for Miguel's travel expense as long as he worked the money back. When getting there, Miguel, as well as other foreigners, were physically threatened and told that they had to stay until their loans were paid off. Ramos made sure that they would not pay off their loans by paying them the lowest wage possible. On top of this, their loans started to grow because they needed food and a place to live. Miguel soon realized that he would never be able to walk away from his job and he was enslaved. After a while, an organization called Coalition for Emocally Workers came to visit the workplace. Once they figured out that Ramiro Ramos was enslaving people, they immediately, immediately took action. A plan was set into place to rescue Miguel and others. They were lucky to be rescued because many enslaved people go unnoticed. Every year, hun year, hundreds of children are taken abroad by their parents and forced to marry against their will. One of these children was Samin Ali. She was abandoned by her parents at birth and kept in a children's home. When she was seven, she was told that her parents wanted her back. However, the, re the reunion was anything but happy. Her mother beat her, and eventually, Samim confided in a teacher, which resulted in her family being visited by a social worker. Just after she turned 13, Samim's mother decided to reward Samim's hard work around the house by taking a trip to Pakistan to visit family. Samim was excited about the trip at first. She thought the social worker worked, and her mother was finally being nice to her. However, this was not the case. When Samim arrived in a small village in Pakistan, her mother told her she'd be forced to marry a man twice her age that she didn't even know. After receiving the news, immediately in a matter of minutes, Samim was married. After attempting suicide, Samim was told that the only way she'd be able to go back home was if she became pregnant. Her family believed if they had a British-born baby, it would give them a right to live in the country. It was then Samim was, was able to return home. Even so, Samim was still extremely unhappy with her life. Some years later, a friend visited her, and Samim confided in him her situation. He eventually told police and were able to help Samim escape from her family with her young son. Today, she is happily married with two sons. She has written a book about her childhood experiences. These are only four survivors out of the 27 million people who are still suffering. We need to pay more attention to and sympathize for those who don't even have the right to own themselves and their jobs.